Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all of you joining us from across the globe. We at STP truly hope you all are doing well and taking care of yourself and staying safe. With that said, welcome to our today's episode of the STP training webinar series. The title for our talk today is AI and UI test strategies for intelligent digital ad tech platform. Our guest speaker joining us on the webinar is Naga Harini Kodi. I'm Smita Mishra. I'm a tester myself and a sustainability enthusiast too. And I'm beyond just excited today to host you all and Harini on the STP webinars. I'm truly thrilled uh, because I so want to learn about this subject and I'm so looking forward to the next one hour. Before we get started with the webinar, let me quickly share an important update that may interest you. There is an upcoming webinar, Continuous Secure Testing, Stepping Stones to a New Era of Your Testing Brigade on 24th of June. The speaker is Christina Palaisingam, who is a senior test engineer at Medidata Solutions. In this presentation, Christina is going to introduce this, uh, the audience to take their very own first steps into security testing. The link is up for you to register. Please do go for it. Also, we are inviting proposals for STP webinars from all of you, and they shall be open all year round, so you can submit anytime you're ready. All the details along with the submission form are at the link given on the screen. Please go through them. In case you have recommendations on topics or speakers, do email them to us. We will be very happy to hear from you. And if you are on Twitter, please share the uh, call for papers information uh, for the webinars and about this particular webinar with your followers and connections. You can add STP's Twitter handle to your tweets, which is at Software Test Pro. Please do add the hashtag STP webinar to your tweets. Also, please note down the Twitter handle of our speaker today. All right. Let's get started with the webinar now. Welcome, Harini. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are very excited to have you with us today. And let me quickly introduce you for all of us here. Naga Harini Kodi is a QA engineer with Viral Games. She has over 12 years of software testing experience in various organizations, including startups and Fortune 100 companies. She's currently working with Viral Games for over three years now which is a leader in intelligent ad journey orchestration uh, yeah orchestration that uses agile methodology she has strong analytical skills and has worked on multiple open source automation frameworks that provide integration functional and visual testing she excels her passion for software test design and patterns by, by collaborating with multiple application teams across vital games to accelerate testing, mitigate risks, and collab uh, and increase the value of testing processes with test automation. She has efficiently managed production operation teams, being responsible for all technical aspects of the application and maintaining the application too. Now let's hear from the doer herself and get started for our session today, AI and UI test strategies for intelligent digital ad tech platform. Harini, the floor is all yours now, and I'm going to sit, sit back and learn from you this one hour. Yeah. Thanks, Mita. Thanks for introducing me to the team. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so I just want to uh, let you all know, like, what are the what is the agenda of this webinar, and where what are we focusing in this webinar? So this webinar is mainly to provide uh, information to the QA team who are going to start their career with the uh, tech domain projects or products and any other um, related applications. So how efficiently they can test and uh, where they can focus uh, on the, in this uh, particular kind of uh, domain and the applications. And as you all know, like um, in this ad tech industry, uh, the changes are like very frequent and they constantly change as per the requirements of the brands and the customers. So they range from segmenting browsers. There will be different segmenting browsers, targeting devices, even environments. And um, the presentation specifications constantly change. In those, uh, in those, in that kind of situation, the QA team plays a major role in each and every um, project uh, during the deliverables and how efficiently we can test our, and um, what are the key uh, techniques that we have to um, follow that will help uh, our uh, job easy. So we'll be discussing all those things here. 
So what are the key takeaways? Coming to the details, um, coming into the um, details, here uh, we will be talking about uh, the testing of uh, the player in the ad tech. So how efficiently we can uh, set up automated tests for the key elements in this auto, uh, in this ad tech industry and uh, which will uh, which are, are daily interacting with the uh, end users and uh, also we will be concentrating on the coverage of the automation test of these player elements from the display till the delivery of an ad and also we will be talking about a few testing techniques how we can efficiently verify the machine learning concept in our application so that there's a huge data that floats in this advertisement um, uh, technology platform every day and um, as a responsible QA team members we should be knowing some of the techniques that will help the data scientists in your projects um, with our uh, value uh, inputs and um, uh, execution results so we'll be talking about all these um, key concepts in the next um, in the rest of the session in this webinar so what uh, so our first uh, topic is uh, the testing of player in ad tech so this player when when the word comes to the player this is a central element of video advertising so this serves as an interface between the video and the user so before go, again before going into the details of the player let's first have a quick recap of what ad tech is so ad tech is a short form of advertisement technology and um, this describes a series of applications that streamline advertising tasks so the applications often uh, focus on day-to-day -day responsibilities here in this advertising sector and um, they mainly focus on the delivering of campaigns and also on uh, analyzing the campaign data so in other words in a simple form uh, this advertising technology um, is helps analyzing managing and delivering the advertisements according to the requirements of an ad so this ad is again as we to, as we uh, understand this ad is a is the main thing that uh, brings in business to the brands and when it is uh, projected to the when it is displayed to the right audience going into the details again here because everything is interrelated to many other components here so before going into the details here we should know like uh, the usage of internet and the consumers usage of this internet became huge these days and this according to the modern business this is a this is a platform where the brand can directly communicate with their customers and the first ad so you, uh, i think everyone knows this like uh, the major the well-known companies that are involved in this advertising technology are google facebook etc so when was the first digital ad appeared online i think a few of us know about this information it was in uh, 1994 and it is a small banner ad which is of 468 by 60 pixel this ad when it appeared online it marked a revolution the click-through rate for this um, ad was around 44 percent at that point of time with this uh, first ad that appeared online from then to till now the digital advertising industry exp is experiencing a period of bloom due to the increased amount of uh, time spent by consumers on digital media and right now the worth of this industry is around 220 billion so here the digital advertising um, refers to the advertising that takes place online it, it is a practice of delivering the content to the users through various online and digital channels so it leverages the medium um, as we know like social media email search engines mobile apps and other programs and in the websites um, that gives messages to the audience the right set of audience so when we think of all these things like an ad is uh, displayed on various browsers layouts and um, various applications and in different different um, sizes of uh, uh, devices and today i test on mobile and tomorrow it will be like ctv and all connected tv and all so when we think of all these things the main challenges that the qa team can come across are um, like how efficiently we can test a ui element or a player element in these various browsers and apps is a key challenge that we will be dis uh, how we can address that we will discuss in the next few slides 
along with that as we discussed we have a lot of data every day huge number of audience will watch uh, our ads so there'll be huge data so to and for the clients and for the brands to hit the right audience they need to analyze this data so we have to we have to project an ad or um, we have to show an ad to a right set of audience then only the revenue and um, the business uh, will be uh, increasing for that brands and the clients so that is another key concept that um, team has to uh, focus on selecting the right set of audience so what qa team can do here how they can help uh, in uh, testing um, that particular uh, uh, in that particular phase data analysis we will be again seeing that in the next few slides now that we know what uh, ad tech is briefly we know where we have to focus the player the data and the elements that we display on the ads that catch the eyes of consumers we will be uh, we'll be seeing like how to proceed step by step uh, in our uh, testing so that uh, we will uh, get to understanding of where to focus and how efficiently we can test in a very easy and reliable process so here here uh, let us take this small example which so which shows that there are three versions of ads one with blue uh, background and one with um, uh, no transparent background and another with the black background so here if you see the thing if you come across uh, the test if you have to design the test scenarios we will be having multiple permutations and combinations where we have to check the ui and the journey of this uh, um, journey of a user when they click on this ui so which is related to ux and then along with that um, we have to also ensure the right set of audience whether they are seeing this or not so if you if, if i just look at this example i see that we have to test numerous times on multiple browsers multiple layouts multiple devices and again the behavior on different uh, for these different um, functionalities uh, for, for this button for the different set of audience so this is this is my initial uh, understanding and initial uh, experience when i see when i come across when a qa team or when i come across this kind of uh, requirement so how how easily and how fun and uh, with how uh, efficiently we can uh, write a test case for this and ensure the test execution makes um covers all these uh, requirements we we are going to talk in the you uh, are going to talk in next few seconds so i am taking the same requirement from the previous page the background of a button must be blue and with a click through action landing users to multiple pages as per targeted audience so how can, how what are the different testing approaches that i can use if i get this kind of requirement so as everyone most of the qa team know like they are functional and non functional require non functional testing uh, approaches or methodologies that uh, each requirement uh, needs to be uh, tested with along with uh, that functional non functional and any other approaches that you want to uh, verify you can uh, we can implement all those things here and along with that the main concentration and the focus should be on the ui so usability testing is an extremely important uh, for this kind of uh, requirements so along with the functionality here like when the button should be clickable okay and you should land users uh, in a different landing pages fine that is also fine but here for the advertisement um, technology the background of a button this is a very severe high severity requirement which catch the consumers eyes so the brand looks for this particular uh, area along with the other functional area so we cannot omit any ui uh, related element during our testing it should be given high severity and um, high complex uh, uh, natured um, uh, uh, priority for this um, particular um, requirement so this is a high severity and high complex test case where we have to verify the background of the button is uh, in uh, blue or not so this is a different this is a main key area that the qa team has to focus on in the advertisement technology the ui plays a vital role and the end user should be able to utilize the product without any dissatisfaction or confusion by the design or the ui and when they see that element they should be able to 
get the gist of uh, what they are doing like the click through what 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 click through action they'll be doing uh, uh, with by reading that uh, particular content and um, to read that content the background the color the fonts everything matters in this um, advertisement uh, technology and um, the key player um, um, system okay so seeing this uh, particular picture uh, we will be finding some light color and some uh, dark color element with some shadows in between and also how this matters to a brand so brand awareness is the most important um, most important requirement for the product and for the services and it drives consumers decisions when differentiating between competing companies so it also it encourages uh, the repeat purchases uh, and leads to an increase in the market share and incremental sales so the brand awareness um, whatever um, we are seeing here so if you take it take it with an example um, like uh, here uh, the product says uh, according to one of our brand right, awareness requirement the customer brand prefer right colored ui elements to be displayed on a video or an image ad in the player for better user experience so they uh, the brand looks for all these ui elements like how eff how effectively they can uh, catch users attention so then they uh, when we get a requirement of this sort like this then we should be we should not omit any minor ui check here as the company's profit uh, depends on um, the better user experience and uh, it will impact a lot if it is a, if there is any one negative user experience in the ad that is displayed to the users so improperly if, if any ui testing is performed um, with um, not having a focus or by having combined ui elements testing then um, the company reputation will be under loss and uh, we, uh, the brand will lose the customers and also each and every minor uh, ui element um, is uh, high, it needs to be tested and should be given a uh, high severity um, um, focus here and again when we test this we have to ensure the same display works on multiple uh, browsers and uh, multiple devices and there should be no um, uh, uh, no issue with uh, this ad or the element displaying on uh, um, various other applications so so all these things should be considered in our testing and um, when i say this it triggers like uh, we can do it through automation and um, we can do it through various other um, different means because manual testing or functional testing is very difficult to test in each and every browser and um, for each and every specific um, gui element so how we can do that automation and all uh, are already detailedly explained in the next few slides and before going to that automation stuff, we will again see the real time ad elements, like what exactly, now that we know what is important in an ad tech, the UI. UI is the key factor and it is um, it needs to be tested thoroughly along with all functional and uh, non-functional requirements and the focus and the testing will be on, mostly on the UI. So when we have when we know what uh, what what is the concept that we have to test in ad tech industry. So here are the real time elements that we should know um, uh, that we most of the ads uh, will have all these configurations on their um, in their players and uh, the users. I think you you are all might have seen at least one or two ads uh, that uh, on your web applications or you know web pages when you are browsing through. So these are the key elements. So add add type. So there are different add um, uh, types which are video, static, stories, carousel, etc. So so video ads are like they play. When you click on them, they play. Or some are like uh, um, by default they play. And the static images are like banners. And the stories are like they they make user uh, watch one after another ad. And uh, like this, there are many ads in different ad formats, like linear ad format and uh, non-linear ad format and companion ad format. So these are like, uh, so you have now a video ad and it is displayed while you're watching some content in your uh, TV. So it is called linear ads. Uh, I mean, it is uh, that ad is displayed before or after the content um, of that uh, video that you are watching. So in a, uh, So I'll rephrase it. So the different ad format types are uh, linear, which is like when you're watching a, watching something in your TV before or after that particular content, if an ad appears, that is linear ad. And then uh, non-linear ads are like concurrently when you're watching something in your um, 
application or in your uh, devices if it appears along with that then it is um, a non-linear ad and um, again um, when uh, with some real images or with some interactive images if an ad appears in front of you when you are watching something else then it is a companion ad so when we are testing uh, a particular ui element according to the requirement it should appear in all these different formats in various types according to the configuration so how we have to test in a smart way um, that we will be discussing in the automation part of this um, um, webinar so uh, now we know different types of ads is a high level and uh, the call to action as you saw in the first uh, if you take uh, if you uh, as we discussed in the first slide so the call to action the click through action for elements that we displayed because an advertisement is not just a displaying an ad in front of a user it's a user journey a user should be able to uh, have a journey when they see that ad that will bring the impression in the user like uh, what they have to do next if they like this brand how they can um, further proceed next uh, with after watching this ad so this is a journey of steps an ad uh, is a journey of uh, the player elements will let an ad have uh, this journey of steps and in that mainly the main one of the key elements is call to action so when uh, the elements that are displayed on these ads through our player they should be clickable and uh, they should be very uh, effective to the users easily usable so we, we our uh, testing focus should be there on these key elements um, during our um, at uh, application testing so um, use of logos again most of the ads have these logos and they, again the, each logo is configured in the way that uh, your brand is looking for so here it can be clickable or it can just display with a, with a good material and that uh, again that uh, logo should be um, visible to the user and um, it, it should contain uh, no typos all everything everything comes under this small element called logo when we test that it and it is a high severity test case so if there is any minor issue with this logo it it creates a lot of um, loss to the business so our test cases should consider all these key elements as a high complex and a severe uh, um, requirements in our test cases and use of social share icons so, so and uh, copies the headlines use of capital letters small letters so all the requirements whatever our product uh, provides us should be tested as an individual um, test step and should be focused and the user should be focusing on these areas uh, in their test cases along with the functionality we cannot omit at least any ui element uh, here in this uh, ad tech domain so ui plays a very vital role and it is very crucial to the business and along with this okay now we know the key elements then devices they should be displayed on mobile desktop tablet ctv and um, what, whatever new devices that comes up to the in the market uh, the next day so these elements once they are tested in um, one application they should be able, they should work on another another devices so we should concentrate on all these um, ui elements this is the core difference between another other domain project other domains and uh, advertisement domain so now we know uh, like what to be tested and uh, how uh, how many permutation combinations we get from one requirement that we saw initially in the first slide and so how efficiently we can do testing for this so here this is the area that i want to stress and I let all the qat members know with uh, experience that um, we have um, acquired in the while working on this um, ad tech domain project so as we discussed in the previous slides the font colors width and height of the text the position the click through links the text formatting and um, the text arrangement the image quality alignment all these are uh, very good user experience elements and these needs to be tested very thoroughly along with your functional and non-functional requirements that um, that are in um, that are uh, that are provided in the requirement so this cannot be avoided avoided um, anytime uh, during automation or manual testing so if you look at this uh, requirement um, team might be um, uh, the QA team uh, who just started working on this project might think like I'll write a test case uh, for these fonts and I'll capture uh, colors and all 
but we have to make sure like these work across multiple layouts multiple sizes multiple browsers multiple devices and one so our test case should be automation test case or manual test case should be should be uh, very uh, stable and robust that it should work on all these devices so how can we do that so i have a couple of recommendations here so one is screenshot based testing so this is um this screen screenshot based testing helps all the qa team member most of the qa team uh, to find out um, the discrepancies between the mockups and the uh, actual, uh, actual uh, current application how uh, it is behaving so here if you see like uh, i so if you take any um, example like selenium if you take uh, the uh, the web driver io they have a um, plugin called visual regression where once you install that uh, if you provide some configuration updates to that existing uh, uh, suite um, like uh, if you provide uh, it helps you to it ha it has a lot of parameters so it helps you to configure like what kind of layouts and uh, what the mismatch percentage the tolerance percentages uh, that you can you would like to provide um, when you are testing with respect to the mockup and um, this uh, um, this kind of testing will ensure like if if you have, if you write one of these test case and it will uh, the automation test will make sure like it runs on all the layouts that are specified and all the browsers that are supported by your uh, um, uh, in your automation suite and um, it, if there is any minor difference between the percentage of uh, tolerance level it will fail the test saying that uh, the expected uh, result is not matching with actual ma ma the actual result is not matching with the, the actual uh, mockup that is provided as an input for this kind of uh, automation testing um, test uh, in a, uh, script so we highly recommend uh, this uh, screenshot based testing it will be helpful for each qa team if they start implementing or if they look explore more options in this kind of uh, approach and um, they and this makes their uh, work um, in a easier and um, the coverage level uh, of the um, add or the ui elements uh, in a in a lot better way and um, there is a second approach okay um, if the, if the mocks keeps changing sometimes and uh, the mocks might be outdated uh, or if they don't have any mocks updated provided by your product team then this is a second approach but make sure like uh, each and every css element is uh, validated in a separate uh, test so that uh, if there is any minor change uh, in, uh, in the ui it will uh, let you know like uh, which test failed and which element failed so as i told you uh, and as we are now understand um, the key concept of uh, the ad uh, for an ad to be like uh, delivered successfully to a user depends only on the critical ui elements that are shown to the user so if there is any slight mismatch between the height or the width or any other uh, ui elements like here you can see background color or the transformation of elements then um, that is a big, severe issue that business will let you not proceed ahead with this in, improper format of um, elements so make sure like um, your tests have these kind of uh, capturing these kind of uh, ui elements in um, in your test individually and um, as we have the another approach that we have discussed uh, like uh, in the configuration itself when you make your setup of your uh, scripts such that they run on multiple layouts and uh, multiple um, devices um, with uh, multiple sizes and with your mismatch percentages you can uh, make your job very easy and uh, you can uh, productively test these kind of uh, requirements in various devices and various layouts and another best practice uh, for automation uh, here in attic uh, domain is uh, we should have a continuous integration setup with our um, uh, automation tests so that uh, each when uh, it, it is similarly like the you do in your other projects like we have our uh, uh, continuous integration setup for our regression test suite and uh, whenever as per its schedule it will run and it will let the team know through reports or through some uh, um, information sources like uh, um, either emails or slack or instant messengers like what are the failures in your uh, uh, regular regression uh, test uh, suite so in a similar way here for ui we need to have a setup uh, 
separately for uh, the reg with the regression or the smoke test feed that you want to test on a daily day to day basis and um, it should let you know like it should notify you whenever there are errors so see that um, you are uh, having this continuous integration for this ui test um, separately um, so along with the other functional tests um, in another job so that you will know when uh, there is an issue with any of your ui uh, representation um, in your local or in your staging environments. Along, uh, yeah, al along with that, uh, I just want to reiterate uh, here some of the um, best practices when you select an automation framework. As we saw, only a few frameworks support the screenshot-based testing. So consider that kind of uh, framework if possible, so that uh, it will help you to configure in one single step where, wherever, whatever, in what devices, what browsers, in what uh, kind of uh, layouts you want to test. So it's a simple change or addition of things in the configuration file, but not in the test file. So it will help you to um, do your job more efficiently. And we have many other uh, plugins and uh, many other frameworks. So consider using that kind of framework. And in ad tech domain, we will talk in the next few slides, the behavioral driven, uh, is the behavioral driven uh, design and the and why is BDD framework very important? Um, I mean, recommended, we can uh, see in the next slides when we talk about the coverage of these uh, tests. And along with, uh, another uh, one of the best practices is like, instead of not only relying on UI test automation, consider testing a couple of scenarios um, as per, uh, your product or um, your um, immediate um, team's request um, uh, in, a, in another way it's like uh, mostly functional so that you will know you will see how ad looks with your natural uh, with your real eyes and um, it's not i we don't recommend i don't recommend it to run across all targeting browsers but select some set of browsers select select set of layouts because most of the times um, um, and uh, select the combination of uh, these layout sizes aspect ratios or different uh, um, targeted um, uh, app applications uh, or apps from your product and uh, run tests on those uh, limited um, devices and the limited browsers and also make your test automation framework portable as we said the changes should be done in the configuration or in the data files but not in the test so that will help you to make a quick change because as we discussed initially like it's a constant changing platform and it depends as per the brand and as per the consumers the requirements keep changing and uh, it changes according to the locations targeted users and also See that your test automation framework is portable so that your team can manage it maintain it um, in a day-to-day -day basis or in a regular intervals and soft assertions so make sure the list of checks that you make for these ui requirements um, in a separate test cases so that we will know whenever a test fails it is a blocker for your uh, business and your application any ui element that is displayed for you on an ad through your player if it is not displayed in a proper format and if a test case that captures it fails it is a blocker and it is a high severity issue for your business so we have to know from the failure of tests like what is failing and uh, what is uh, what is working fine on your uh, and, and the, at the ui end and uh, take screenshots whenever there is a failure investigation so the screenshot based testing will take a screenshot and will let you know like where is the difference between what the, what is the current uh, application how is it behaving and what is the difference between the mock-up and the um, current application and with that also with the with these screenshots we can uh, immediately identify what the issue is where the issue is and um, set up a detailed automation test report so that your product and your stakeholders can look at the reports and understand uh, what the issue is and uh, um, guide uh, the respective team accordingly to fix these issues okay now uh, we know we know what ad tech is and uh, what are the key elements uh, that we have to focus in the ui and uh, how uh, how imp how we how we effective uh, how um, how crucial they are to your business and all and if there is any change in your ui element it impacts uh, how impactful it is for your business we saw all these things okay what is next okay now that we have our ad and the elements that are ready for your user 
so how how are we ensuring from the qa team point of view like uh, how is this delivered uh, to an ad so how affirmatively we can uh, we can do an end to end testing in this um, ad uh, ad tech uh, industry so we will be seeing that here as we said um, this ad tech is a complex application which is interconnected with numerous subsystems numerous subsystems you can see here in the in this example like um, so it is involved with uh, creatives which are our uh, videos and uh, association with uh, some creatives and campaigns so um, so deliver an ad it's not like once an ad is done with the player we cannot simply publish it to the users so we need some other systems which are integrated with your player and uh, that um, helps uh, defining uh, your uh, that helps uh, the publishers to publish your ad uh, to the right audience so if one subsystem fails in during this end to end uh, process then um, the whole player could stop working and also the ultimate thing is like uh, you did might miss to capture metrics which is a main uh, revenue to the organization so if an ad is viewed by any customer that uh, cost per view gives a revenue to the organization along with the click throughs and other uh, different uh, metrics that each uh, application or product or brand will have according to them so this is a high level uh, scenario where if one subsystem fails it could stop playing and uh, it will miss the uh, critical metrics that brings in revenue to the organization so how, how how what what we should focus here being in the qa team is like we recommend again the behavioral context of uh, multiple applications so we have to capture the behavioral context of the multiple applications like here if, if i again uh, re uh, repeat this uh, example this ad tech system so the end to end test case for uh, a scenario if i take it uh, is verify an ad is delivered to a user so i have an ad the player elements and uh, now what next how how can i ensure it is delivered to an user so each and every component that is involved in this uh, particular application like here the ad journey the your journey uh, features are like login creatives um, like campaigns dashboards everything so all these things during this uh, delivery of an ad plays a critical role so we should be able to um, test each and every step through the behavior of the application so i uh, here horizontal end to end um, testing uh, method is uh, recommended uh, in, uh, for uh, good um, effective end to end test coverage where we'll focus only on the behavior of the application and that leads to a user journey in a smooth and um, um, in a, uh, in, a, in a smoother way so okay um, so now we know like uh, what um, what are the areas that we have to um, concentrate during end-to-end uh, -end testing so the behavior the components that are involved right from the create uh, video uh, player element uh, ui um, setup till the delivery of an ad we we have to maintain this test uh, even um, even after testing it for once we have to maintain this test again in auto we will be using the automation where uh, it we can rerun this test and um, um, again and again on um, every day because uh, uh, we have to see that this ad is delivered to the audience and there is no issue between any components uh, during uh, the delivery of an ad so this test should be run in everyday basis or as per your product requirements but when you do do this maintenance it should be like uh, very easy for the qa team members to maintain the suite so as um, if i recall if, uh, if if it if it is very clear for you all then uh, see when if, if there is a maintenance change in only one set of file then it will be easy for the user, user or a qa team member to rerun the test with the new changes in this end to end suite also so pick up the right scope of automated test that drives user journey across end to end of the application so pick the right set as an uh, end to end test so instead of having multiple ui uh, elements testing uh, in your end to end uh, test steps have uh, the critical elements and the critical components that are required for a smoother user uh, user journey across your end to end application and pick a right framework as we discussed earlier that will help your stakeholders and the qa team to be comfortably adding additional steps because the things change frequently in ad tech the requirements change um, 
and um, there can be like new ads uh, requirements coming new ad player requirements coming up or new changes in your feature features in your application so the things uh, the step should be um, the qa team should be very comfortable to add and uh, edit the steps at any point of time as per the product changes so right pick up the right framework that will help you uh, by focusing on the elements that we have discussed earlier that are needed for in the ad tech industry and then um, the test uh, make sure like your tests are highly stable in all the builds and uh, if bugs are logged as and when there is a um, failure in your end to end test suite so that immediately team can start working looking into it and then start working on it because we can this is not an application where we can um, wait uh, for um, uh, fixing it uh, uh, after certain time so each day each minute each view matters for your um, each view of a user matters for your brand and the client okay now that we know what are the what is ad tech what where uh, we have to focus uh, on the, uh, what are the key elements what are the key areas that we have to focus in ui and um, in end to end tests and um, this gives you a high level picture of uh, where we are right now but in this uh, ad tech industry there is another um, key factor that uh, the team has to um, put focus on provided the opportunity that uh, or provided the business use it so this is a um, highly demanding uh, um, concept that we are going to discuss in the next few minutes this is a hot topic uh, and it depends uh, on each application the way the qa team uh, perform uh, testing uh, so but i am recommending here um, here a couple of uh, testing techniques um, that are that a qa team can start exploring and looking at when they start working on this kind of ad tech domain projects so before going into the details of this uh, hot topic called machine learning as i told you earlier each day uh, an ad is viewed by hundreds and thousands of people so there will be a lot of data but i don't a brand or a client don't want uh, to project this ad to a, to a set to an audience which who are not interested in this ad that will not um, bring in any valuation to his business right so we uh, they wanted to pro, uh, they wanted to try their best to um, pro, uh, to make these ads available uh, to the users who are uh, having a certain interest or certain um, requirements so they want to uh, everyone want to just project this as a right set of audience so in that point of um, in that point it becomes machine learning into the picture and here how is this machine learning um, testing different from the conventional software development so is it really different or is it the same so first if we look at this particular point so um, this is completely different so uh, the machine learning testing is different from the conventional uh, software development testing how how is it different so the usage of the word testing in machine learning is mainly focusing on the performance of and performance of the models whereas um, in conventional software we we do our testing on functional non functional requirements that we see on our um, in your application so here it depends on the data so the from the but from the quality perspective both are uh, both needs to be tested um, thoroughly uh, as per uh, as per the as per the scope of your application so um, data plays a huge role um, in advertising test advertisement uh, technology platform so now we know like uh, what is what is the focus here in machine learning what what are the focused areas of machine learning in advertisement technology so what are the techniques that we can implement so the, this is a working session where uh, it will help uh, the qa team to understand uh, like what kind of testing techniques they can implement um, in their um, machine learning data validation or verification so here i recommend uh, model performance and metamorphic testing which are uh, a black black box testing types um, um, that uh, that can help uh, qa team to analyze the data um, to make to run the test according to the data or the models that are provided by the data scientists so first let us look at the model performance uh, testing technique so what it is exactly so here the models are already defined by the data scientists there is nothing a qa team uh, can uh, do with the data uh, i mean 
prepare or uh, um, work on the data kind of so that is out of scope for us so the models are already prepared so now the qa as a black box testing team member what i can do here is like i can compare i can compare the data set on production the model on the production and the test data on your local environments uh, are whether they are uh, meeting the kpi of your um, uh, product or not so here if i go into the details the model performance like there are multiple evaluation metrics in this model uh, in during this model performance uh, testing like accuracy recall precision even f1 score etc and all so these are the evaluation metrics and uh, the, so if you take one of the evaluation metric according to your product requirement make sure like uh, you verify that with your already uh, developed and already built or moved into the production that kind of data and this is a simple and um, and um, trivial uh, different uh, technique uh, that you can use in your uh, black box testing and metamorphic uh, testing what is this this is one of this is like uh, finding out the relationship between input and output page so generally in our test case we we provide input uh, like uh, if i provide this value the output should be like this when i navigate to this page i should see the output like this so so here also in um, machine learning uh, so when you um, test when anyone uh, qa team starts testing this kind of um, data provide different set of data to your test set um, so each and every um, feature file in your automation uh, suite so make your test to have uh, multiple data sets uh, passed to the uh, application and uh, see the report or the result that uh, comes as an output is according to your data that you have provided um, and according to the relationship with it so example Hmm. If I take a requirement like this, like uh, whether uh, if the product, if the brand wants to know, like uh, whether the ad is projected to the right set of audience, like a male person who is of 30 years of age, um, they are targeting to that kind of uh, set of audience, and they want to know how likelihood uh, this ad uh, will be like watched by that kind of person, and if it is beyond 30 years of age or less than 30 years of age. So at that point of time, the model is already defined by your data science scientists. So train you um, uh, train your model um, with the data that you have, uh, with the evaluation metrics that you recommend, um, with the variables um, as per your application standards. Like your application can have it in a different different ways, right? So take that um, particular steps of um, steps where you can train this model data with the evaluation metrics and the predicator variables that you have to insert as an input and verify the output um, of your ad. Um, is uh, behaving according to that uh, pred uh, predicted uh, values or uh, precision values or uh, according to that or not as for the kps first of all we have to look into the kpi requirement and it and we have to run our test accordingly with these para variables using these techniques and uh, you can easily identify your test case is failing or not and um, if it fails um, you can work with your data scientist to get it uh, fixed or to get further analysis so um, these testing techniques will lay, to, with my experience i am 100 percent sure like these testing techniques if you follow this pattern of comparing the data with your production data and providing variable uh, actual set of predictor variables we can um, identify the uh, the accurate result uh, we can verify the accurate result uh, from your uh, reports whether the report is showing the likelihood percentage or uh, other uh, um, percentages as um, per expected or not so everything is defined in your model we will be, you will be just testing the model uh, with our input and uh, that output uh, that you see on your report should match according to the input uh, that you provide and if there is any discrepancy just report it to your data scientist okay again uh, when we talk about these things a few qa team members are very curious to know like um uh okay now we know all these concepts like i know you yeah, a player ui i know how how an uh, ad will be delivered what are the different uh, complex systems that are involved in it and uh, now we have the data we analyzed it i know uh, what ad uh, we should be project uh, whether this ad will be projected to the right audience or not but how 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 can you say that some of my friends and the team members are also very curious to know like how were well, well, you publishing and add to a right set of audience there are a couple of ways of testing this uh, testing this like split testing and uh, a b testing 
Um, again, this is just for uh, um, knowledge purpose. I'm just giving you an example at a very high level. So in real time, the A-B testing is done by many internet companies like Netflix, Google, Facebook, etc. So how that goes, I just want to give you an example here. So already the models are defined by your data scientist team members, some model A or no model or model B and all. So when an ad is, the ad is, the ad, the campaigns are trained in a way that uh, if they use this model A, example here, I'm taking a couple of states. So if I have a model A with respect to some state, in that state, if you, pro, if you publish this ad um, to set of users, and if you, if, you, if you receive some X number of views, and um, as I told you, each cost of view is a revenue to your business, right? So that, that um, from that X number of views, we can uh, calculate the cost. And um, these are all defined again. So they will be the requirement will be like this: like I have a model. Uh, these are the number of views, and um, this is an ad. So what QA team can do here is like as we discussed in the blackboard testing, just train your data as per the you uh, as per your application and see that when you provide this kind of campaign for this uh, model uh, and um, when this number of user views are provided in your input. The output on the report that is already uh, using this and calculating according to this model A um, match or uh, match uh, in the date uh, in the KPI defined by your uh, data scientist team. So similarly, I have another ad here which has, which has no model at all and it is displayed for all the states and it has Y number of views. So here the KPI is defined in such a way like if you use model A, if you have these many costs uh, per view and if you have uh, model B, uh, it has Y number of views then um, the key factor is like when we have greater cost per view then uh, we can that model is efficiently working and it hit the right set of audience so um, here i provided some of the parameters like when you train this data make sure like um, the input and output that you provide in your test cases are um, with a small set of data talk to your data scientist team and uh, get the data um, as um, per the scope of your application so we can assess um, the model no model interactions made by users uh, with this kind of approach and this is one of the approaches a b testing in future we'll talk about split testing provided we get an opportunity uh, how uh, the split testing works uh, based on uh, different segments and all okay so um, uh, before i end this session i want to let you know so many of the qa team members and the managers or the, the management team uh, will be looking for a set, certain skill set like who can perform this blackboard testing? Whether your QA team has a um, is a, uh, is having a, enough um, skill set or not. Uh, even for the QA team, they are very curious to know like whether I can involve in this blackboard testing or not. Yes, you can. It, if you know just uh, these four following four factors, um, so um, then you can easily um, get the uh, get the knowledge and then you can start working along with your functional testing. You can work on machine learning, blackboard testing techniques, and that kind of application on the project. So here you should be knowing little basic machine learning concepts, machine learning terminologies like what is precision, recall accuracy, what are the evaluation metrics, and what are the predicated variables that are helpful in providing the inputs and all. And small terminologies um, uh, about uh, features, feature importance, and uh, like that. And also, if you have some knowledge on data analytics, is how to analyze your data. But it is very straightforward for the QA team. There is nothing that you can go and sit on the SQLs and analyze the data. It is just the input, what you provide, the output, what you get. You have to just look into the requirements and find out whether it is matching according to your KPIs or not. So that kind of data analytics skills. Mm, and uh, some scripting knowledge like SQL, mm, it will be uh, and um, small set of uh, anyway for automation we need some scripting knowledge. So these kind of things will help the QA team to make a best uh, black box testing uh, QA engineer. And references as I've been working on this uh, application from last year around uh, three plus around four years. I have referred many documentation to get me familiar with all these things and get uh, um, efficiently work on, on this ad tech domain. So I have referred a couple of them here in this references section. Thank you so much, Harini. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a good session on the testing strategies for uh, intelligent digital ad tech platform. And uh, thanks for sharing all the details. I'm sure it helped a lot of our uh, listeners testers uh, all right so what i'll do is i'll quickly uh, ask you a couple of questions that we have here and uh, okay sure Smita. 
So first one is, uh, can you explain metamorphic testing with an example of machine learning? Yeah, sure. So um, as I said, uh, um, suppose we have a requirement saying that how likely an ad is um, project, uh, an ad is uh, published to a set of right audience of a male of 30 years or uh, greater than that. So this is a high level example. Uh, if you take in the ad um, campaigns and all, so here I, I need to provide the predicated variables uh, like that. So if I take a campaign or if I take a creative that was already, um, uh, you will have some data in your local, right? So take that kind of data and uh, see that um, you provide the input uh, in such a way that the output um, is already defined by your data scientist. And if it, um, if your set of input data that you give match with your um, output relation, if they have the relation between them, then you can uh, tell that the likelihood is, uh, they'll give you the likelihood percentages also. Like with this set of data, you should see the likelihood percentages like this or not, like it should be 5% for 30, per 30 years or some 10% if it is 40 years. Back. So like that, uh, they, everything will be defined. The QA job is to just verify by providing various inputs and the output is as per the as as it is defined by your data scientist so uh, what i understand is that we are not really testing the model itself uh, as independently we are testing it for the hypothesis that the data scientists have given us so that is our benchmark and we are testing it against that yes in the black box testing techniques yes Okay, uh, next question here is, does your team work with the users directly for testing? No. All right. Uh, and but here we is have our next environment set up uh, the, so mostly all projects or all products, they have their own test uh, set up, um, uh, what we say like test setup area where you will be watching your ads and that replicates exactly like what a user will see and user will see at their end so we'll have some test players okay it makes sense uh the next question here is how to build data analytical skills as a tester any suggestions and tips First thing, it depends on the interest. So, um, and also it depends on the knowledge that we have in um, in our uh, previous experience. So, and also when you start working on the on the uh, on your application with some set of data, as I told you, we will be with the with the with the um, perm uh, permutations and combinations of data that you work on. You will and will start analyzing your data and. Uh, you can build your analytical skills accordingly. If I answer right. Yeah, uh, surely I think uh, you also mentioned earlier about SQL and uh, I mean SQL skills that would definitely help. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, here is our last question for now. That is, uh, what are the different ways of testing uh, the model or the algorithm beyond just the uh, metamorphic testing or model performance I mean beyond the black box testing if you have to do it in a more detailed way so again um, I want to say like uh, see these models are not uh, visible to the uh, team which are not uh, working with the data scientist team so my main focus here is being in the QA team how we can uh, um, improve i mean enhance our skill set uh, on this um, data science or machine learning uh, um, at the machine learning uh, concept my uh, models end but uh, um, yeah we will not have an exposure uh, to look into the models and uh, check the model uh, logics or uh, yeah model details and all but we will know like what are the models and what is it what each model will do and what are we targeting in that model according to your company requirements we will be knowing like uh, it's not like i'll be provided model a and to do anything so qa team will also have that knowledge 
after we go through the requirements and the kpis that are defined like what exactly our model is going to do and what kind of data how to provide uh, to get the um, result so how do you build your data sets for it like if you have to run different kinds of data set how do you go about building it so again it depends on your application right so uh, in my application i ha i have my data uh, so i select the data and i just uh, train it got it uh, that will be all for now here harini so thank you again thank you so much for uh, giving such an informative and uh, useful session i'm sure uh, our attendees also enjoyed so i personally enjoyed your presentation so looking forward to more Thank you, Smita. Thank you, everyone. Well, everyone, this concludes our webinar for today. And thank you for joining and uh, making the most of the webinar for yourself and others by asking questions. So thank you. Um, stay tuned for more webinars. We have uh, an upcoming webinar, which is Continuous Secure Testing, Stepping Stones to a New Era of Your Testing Brigade on 24th of June. The speaker is Christina Thale Singham, who is a senior test engineer at Medidata Solutions. In this presentation, Christina is going to introduce the audience to take their very own first steps into security testing. If the subject interests you, please do sign up for the same at softwaretestpro.com. And before I leave, let me also remind you, the call for submissions for the webinars is open and it's going to remain open all year round. So please do send in your proposals at the given link. Thank you, everyone. Please stay healthy and safe and uh, practice so safe social distancing. Good luck to all of you. <laughs>